Hi guys, Vertus Education here with the fourth video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series. And in this video specifically, I'm going to be going over initial level design concepts. So yes, uh, god damn it, it's already screwed up. But anyway, as some of you may already know, you can't necessarily dive into an engine as I have done here and expect to uh, make a level. Everyone makes this mistake. Uh, actually, you need to do plenty of documentation and general planning for your level before you go into it and make it. There's numerous reasons for this. Firstly, it is not the best practice because, uh, you know, you've got to know exactly what you're creating. You're not just going to make something off the top of your head uh, like some artists do where they create crazy, crazy sculptures that might not appeal to everyone. So, uh, you know, you've also got to uh, abide to some restrictions of the game you're working with, for example, your theme, uh, your placement, uh, the shapes used, the gameplay mechanics inside of it, and the general layout. So having said that in mind, you have been tricked, I'm closing UDK, we're not going to open it again for the next, for this video. So uh, let's get this open, we have Photoshop. So in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to sort of plan out and, uh, yeah, sort of plan and brainstorm your level in its most uh, very very basic form uh, just so you can get a good sense of what your level is going to be and get yourself ready for the upcoming tutorials in which we're actually going to be creating our levels so you can actually see in Photoshop right here I actually have a lovely lovely template which I've created here for planning so let's just go over some of the main areas we have the the level name, we have the legend, we have some space for the actual layout itself, and we also have the level info. Please keep in mind you don't necessarily have to do your level layouts inside of Photoshop. You can use uh, traditional pencil and paper, which is pretty good. You can use GIMP, you can use paint, uh, you can use whatever you want, as long as you can uh, easily uh, draw something. Uh, but personally, I like uh, Photoshop because it's really intuitive, interactive, and uh, really, really utilizes that uh, layer system really well, which is essential for uh, level design planning. But anyway, having said that, let's get straight into uh, some lovely planning which we have here. So I'm going to start off with the level info. Before you go into any level, you've got to know exactly what you're going to be creating. So. First and foremost, what are you creating? What kind of game, uh, what sort of theme is your game? Uh, let's say I'm going to be working with a sci-fi game. The reason for this is because um, because UDK comes with a bunch of uh, pre-made assets which I'm going to be utilizing in the content browser for these uh, for the video uh, tutorials. So I'm going to be using a sci-fi. Uh, I'm going to be using a sci-fi theme for that reason. Obviously, if you're working with some kind of uh, game, obviously you're gonna have to keep to their style. For example, if it's some sort of old-style steampunk, then obviously it'd be steampunk, or maybe even futuristic, maybe even uh, I, I don't know whatever floats your boat. But nonetheless, you've got to keep to the style you've been given. Or if you have no restrictions, uh, you can just do whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. Also, next up we have the location, the sort of setting, and generally where uh, and what is the level. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a... I'm going to be doing something awesome. Yes, that's right, I'm going to be doing something awesome. No, I'm kidding, I'm going to be making a warehouse, because warehouses are cool and somewhat easy to do. You can do whatever you want, as I said just, uh, as I said before. Um, obviously, uh, if you have... Uh, fuck! Damn it! Obviously, if you're working with a pre-made game or something that's in progress at the moment, you're obviously going to stick to things like storylines or just general settings or whatever you've actually been assigned to make. Uh, obviously, I'm just going to be doing a warehouse because I can, but uh, you might be doing a, I don't know, a strip club or something like that. So I'm not going to give an example, any example as to why you've been making a strip club, but you know, the suggestions there that anyone wants to make a cool game with strip clubs and stuff, but I probably won't play. But if it's cool, I might. I might. Anyway, so we have our theme, we have our uh, setting. What else do we need? Well, you know, this usually is enough to go on. But uh, you might want to take into account things like gameplay and mechanics, which you might want to have to compensate for in the level. For example, I'm going to be doing some crushing walls over here. I'm going to have some water. I'm going to be having uh, massive AI battles. You know, just try to document that and generally write out how they're going to happen where they're going to happen and uh, when we actually get into the layout we into the layout we will be making those happen so uh yeah 
And one last thing before we actually get into making the layout, we are going to be doing some. Uh, look, we're going to be doing some research, research for uh, reference images specifically. The reason for this is because different themes, different settings, they all have different sorts of shapes and uh, different shapes and angles and all that stuff used in the levels. For example, if I was to go and look for a sci-fi warehouse, which I just did. Uh, there we go. You can see it's very industrial, very cluttered, there's a lot going on. They have sort of curved roofs. Uh, the lighting usually comes from the top rather than the sides. And uh, yeah, it's really, really big open spaces. Whereas if you were to have something like a medical, uh, like like a, uh, a hospital, you wouldn't have one big gigantic room. You would have loads and loads of wards. So let's say I was to go to a sci-fi house have a look for one. Uh, if I go for a sci-fi house you can see they are somewhat very very blocky as opposed to uh, sorts of industrial warehouses which we saw which uh, were one big gigantic compartment with uh, curved ceilings and all that good stuff. So just trying to try find a bunch of reference images with regards to what your level is going to be looking like. I'm just going to type in sci-fi city to give you another example. Uh, but anyway, just look up what you're going to be doing. I've seen some warehouses already, obviously, before this, and so on and so forth. So just dump your reference images in this template which is going to be available in the description if I haven't already noted that which I'm pretty sure I have but anyway nonetheless uh, you know you know what to do just dump them in there and let's go on to the next thing the next thing is the legend I'm actually not going to go into that sorry uh, but everyone knows what a legend is you just have key uh, just kind of have the keys showing exactly what things are for example uh, let's say you've got a room that's going to be a block you're going to have your uh, cover area which is going to be a line you know you're going to put that up there just so they know what a line is anyway that's a legend that's a level that's some level info obviously you can do all this research and all this stuff in a lot more detail um, but uh, just for the sake of time constraints I'm going to be going uh, in this very basic form and obviously you can pick it up from other places so I'm just going to type in here I've got my futuristic uh, warehouse geez my typing is terrible at the moment and this is going to be called this is going to be called uh, no I'm not going to be using that name I'm just going to call it uh, what am I going to call the you know what Virtus Warehouse because that sounds cool or Virtus Storage yes that is that is quite badass and that's what I'm going to be calling my warehouse so next up some of you are going to be wondering what the flying beep is this in the center of uh, my level and yes I did just do a manual beep but anyway you know what is this this is just an example layout which I made previously obviously we're going to be creating a different layout seeing as it's a different level I'm actually going to be sticking with this one as I made it previously but uh, the layout's going to change massively dependent on uh, what your level actually is for example earlier I said uh, you got to take in, uh, things into consideration like these sort of setting you got to take uh, the gameplay mechanics the shapes used and all of that so having said that I uh, just tried creating a basic layout but before you do uh, um, there's a few things you need to remember try to keep it as linear as possible if you're working with single player or even multiplayer just so the player doesn't get confused they don't feel like they're in a maze as you can see here obviously they got the start point here which I haven't mapped out yet uh, which you should do you've got your start point you've got your end point and along that way you've got just pretty much one linear path to go down obviously you can go left or right but it takes you to the same end point at the end which is uh, pretty much being linear and uh, they don't have to go they don't want to have to go to tons and tons of different uh, points and uh, get lost on the way so keep it nice and short and concise and simple and intuitive so you know we've got a layout here so obviously you might have created yours by now let's say you got that you got that you got that because you're going down some kind of uh, I don't know whatever you're doing but you know that might be your layout because I don't know maybe you're making a bunch of interconnecting warehouses or something like that I don't know but just try and get yourself a layout get some cool stuff and uh, yeah so let's say you got your layout uh, you're probably going to have to adjust it now because I just told you the wrong thing uh, you're probably going to have to make alterations seriously you will uh, usually levels don't come from one layout uh, you're going to be erasing parts and creating them again just so uh, it's perfect for example let's say over here I wanted some kind 
of gameplay mechanic where I have crushing walls, which I might have uh, mentioned previously. Crushing walls. You know, obviously, this is actually perfectly fine at the moment, but if I was to do something like this circle, that's going to be pretty hard to do, really crazy and just lame. So you might have to adjust the shape to something more like this hallway over here, which is actually perfect for crushing walls and is actually going to be used for it. So I'm just going to create this text here. I'm going to make it nice and small so it fits in. But anyway, uh, you know, we've got a gameplay mechanic. And I'm going to have these on both sides just so uh, they don't get uh, sad when they realize they could have just gone down the other way. But uh, obviously because I'm too smart for them, I'm going to force them to have to do it. Anyway, gameplay mechanics are usually going to shape the... Uh, actually, yeah, gameplay mechanics are going to shape your level. So keep that in mind. You're not, you're not going to build your shape uh, around... Sorry, you're not going to build gameplay mechanics around your shape. That's boring, that's limiting. You're actually going to build your layout around your gameplay. So... Uh, you know, we've got nice, lovely, crushing walls here. What else are we going to do? We're going to have some water. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the smart thing. Start, I'm going to have to mark that out. Uh, probably the first thing you should probably do in single player. Uh, start, duplicate this. This is the end, just so we know the sort of flow. So this is the end. Also, I am going to have another gameplay mechanic in this big room here, which is an AI battle, which is pretty cool. Uh, what else am I going to have? I'm going to have some water here, I'm going to have some water here, and so on and so forth. So we've got a nice lovely layout, it's looking pretty sweet, so we're going to have to make some serious alterations around your, um, your your actual gameplay and whatever whatever else you have. But hopefully by the end of this video you should have something pretty sweet to work with. I'd say this is a pretty cool layout. And I personally think that it's ready to go on to, uh, you know, producing inside of UDK. Obviously, you're going to have to flesh it out in more detail than I did, but obviously I didn't do too much detail due to time constraints. But uh, see what you can create. You can get really, really complex stuff. Uh, like, uh, I've seen a few people, which I also like to do as well. Uh, no, don't take wrong context. But uh, I've also seen a few people which like to map out... Uh, player movement with uh, arrows and stuff like that, like this. You can see with the arrows thing showing where they'll come. You might want to do that. I know a pretty talented level designer which does it. I also do this. Uh, you might also want to plot down cover points. Say they run into this room, it's going to be a crate there, another big crate there they can hide behind. And obviously the player movement's going to change around that. For example, these this uh, line here is going to be player movement, and these going to be these. But anyway, you know. I'm, I'm just starting to ramble on here. We should have a decent, um, a decent level plan. We can actually start to move into it. You know, don't be afraid to spend as much time as you want in here because, quite frankly, if you don't plan, you plan to fail. And uh, if you plan, you just reduce the development time and make things a hell of a lot easier for yourself. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to watch the next video in which we'll actually be creating the BSP brush out for our level. So I will see you next time. Goodbye.